Thank you for coming back. We will now start our parallel session one under the theme of green and digital KSPs. So without further ado, allow me to introduce our moderator, Mr. Song Chul Jung, the former president of the Science and Technology Policy Institute, otherwise known as STEPI. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Moderator, the floor is yours. Um, thank you very much. Our session today, as it was mentioned, is on the topic of green digital KSPs. And we will be looking at how we will be approaching this topic. There are three presentations. And the first presentation will take a look at the overall science technology. Number two will look at the digital contents development. And the third presentation will be on the development of smart cities. For the discussion, we have invited three speakers and there are three panelists. Let me briefly introduce them to you. First of all, in terms of the science and technology policies, we have with us uh, Mr. Bernardo Milano, who is the head of had an advisor for international affairs and cooperation, uh, reported directly to the Minister of Science, Technology, and Innovation. And then we have Dr. Jihad Jemai, and for. The Smart City Development presentation of Honduras, we have with us Mr. Son Hong Soon from Samsung SDS, who will give a presentation. And so, uh, Professor Chang Yong Soon of Myeongju University, Professor Lee Ju Yeon of Aju University, and also Han Bom Soon, Professor of Kyungi University will give a presentation. Because of the time constraint, I would give 15 minutes to our speakers and to our panelists. I would like to allocate five minutes. I ask for your cooperation. First, I would like to invite our speaker from Brazil, which who will talk about enhancing the science, technology, and innovation of the national system in Brazil, Mr. Bernardo Milano. My name is Bernardo Milano, and I am the head of the International Affairs Office of the Brazilian Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation. It's a great pleasure and an honor to join you in this event. Today, I will share with you some highlights of the project we carried out under the Knowledge Sharing Program in collaboration with STEPI, entitled Enhancing the Science, Technology, and Innovation System in Brazil. But before I start, I would like to thank the Korean Ministry of Economy and Finance, the Korean Development Institute, and the Science and Technology Policy Institute for all the support you gave us. The proposed project aimed to identify ways to better organize the Brazilian system of STI. As I will show you later, the Brazilian STI system is multifaceted and complex. Our main objectives were to seek ways to maintain the system financing sustainable and to better organize the system governance. And here is important to remember that Brazil is a federation and the states are autonomous. And number three, to train personnel and establish exchanges on STI policymaking. Those were ambitious objectives, but the project's trump was to face our problems in front of a very successful example of economic growth by SDI, South Korea. Here I want to show you some of Brazil's key facts. I believe this is important for you to understand the complexity of our system, which triggered the project. And Brazil is the fifth greater area in the world and the sixth country more populous. However, the demographic density is low. The population is concentrated in the southeast and south regions. The north region, where Amazonia is, has low demographic density as well as the central and northeast regions, except on the coast. The Brazilian GDP is not negligible, and Brazil is among the 10 world's more robust economies. However, Brazil is a country of contrasts, with high rates of social inequality, which is reflected in the Human Development Index, just 
84 in the world. A, a crucial piece of information here is Brazil is a federative republic, which means that the 26 states and the federal district are autonomous, including they have their own systems of STI. Well, now let me tell you a little bit about Brazil STI systems. We do have a complete innovation system that counts on subsystems of education, where Brazil has some of the best universities of Latin America, production and innovation, a vibrant system with industries and startups. Brazil is also the home of more than 10,000 startups and 13 unicorns. We rank top five countries in startup rate. Public and private financing sources, uh, but the public ones are more active, and also policy and regulation at national and state levels. Also, we have a diversity of funding instruments, such as the National Fund of Scientific and Technological Development, FNDCT, the main one. One important observation here is that during the last years, the federal government constrained FNDCT availability due to the economic crisis. However, at the beginning of this year, with the personal efforts of Minister Marcos Pontes and many other actors, and I suppose with a little help from the pandemic as well, the Brazilian Parliament voted a law that prohibits the FNDCT constraints. It means we're going to have more investments. Brazil also con counts on qualified researchers and institutions in its entire territory. It's expressed by the quality of scientific papers and the good results of research. However, the knowledge is not being transformed into products, processes, or services consistently. Also, Brazil has appropriate research infrastructure, including a fourth-generation particle accelerator series. Brazil has many stakeholders studying its national STI system, as well as the Brazilian economy, some of them are mentioned in this slide. To abbreviate, I will summarize the most significant challenges that they've already identified. So CGE, lack of long-term strategy, lack of synergy between the subsystems of education, research, and production innovation. IPEA and OECD, Investments in R&D exist, but, but are insufficient and fragmented. The Brazilian Cooperation Agency, need of cooperation, coordination for effective interaction of different ministries, federal, state, and local agencies, and civil society. The National Association for Research and Development of Innovative Companies, need of greater cooperation among ministries so that industrial, educational, and innovation might operate with coordination and synergy. And finally, the Federal Audit Court, lack of acting structure for coordinating federal policies to promote innovation under the integrated government perspective. We don't have a long-term strategy for STI, and the system is fragmented. Considering the number of stakeholders and subsystems at different levels, which mean, without measuring my words, lack of coordination among the different actors. Okay, investments are possibly insufficient and fragmented, and the system is poorly coordinated, which resulted in duplicate actions, dissipation of resources, and lack of focus. Okay. Here, we can see a representation of the Brazilian science, technology, and innovation system. Of course, it's a simplified scheme. The system is organized in four axes. Political, which involves the executive branch and legislative branch, both at federal and state levels, besides the civil society organizations. Funding, and here I am showing just a fraction, considering that each state has its own SCI funding agency and they are gathered at the National Confederation of Research Support Foundations. In addition, linked to MCTI, we have the National Council of Scientific and Technological Development, CNPQ, the Brazilian Company for Innovation Research, FINEPI, 
and the Brazilian Company of Research and Industrial Innovation, Embrapi. Besides them, we have a public bank, the National Bank of Social and Economic Development, BNDES, and the Coordination for Improvement of Higher Education Personnel, CAPES, linked to the Ministry of Education and the main funding body for postgraduate courses in Brazil. Supporting institutions, here I want to highlight the National Education and Research Network, RNP, which provides high quality internet for universities, research institutes, university hospitals, research infrastructures, and connects Brazil to Europe, Africa, and other countries from South America. Other important institutions are the National Institute for Intellectual Property, INPI, the National Institute of Metrology in Metro, and the Technological Innovation Centers linked to innovative institutions. And this complex system is operated by various public non-profit and private institutions and companies besides the startups, incubators, and accelerators. Well, at this point, I would like to highlight that MCTI created a secretariat, CFIP, dedicated to seeking new and alternative ways to fund R&D and I in Brazil. The idea is to obtain resources from the private sector to add to the public resources already available. These new ways have a significant role in the project's objectives achievement. Well, here you can see a list of some of the possible funding instruments being structured by the new Secretariat. Okay, next slide. Despite the project's execution having been hampered by the pandemic and by the 12-hour time difference between the two countries, the teams involved managed it to elaborate a high-level work. The three main objectives, as I said before, were to obtain sustainable finance for the STI national system, to improve the STI governance of the national system, and to provide capacity building and knowledge exchange on STI and STI policymaking. The capacity building seminar was remarkably challenging and it was held online with a 12 hour time difference. The STEPI team was fantastic in guiding us in this journey. We found out an open-minded team that understood our challenges despite the cultural differences and did their best to help us find solutions. STEPI accepted to work in a different way and adapted their work to our demand. So, once more, I wanted to thank STEP's team, and particularly the main investigator, my dear friend, Dr. Yong Su Kiang, and his collaborators. Also, the Brazilian consultants, with the support of CGEE, worked hard in this project, in a diverse conditions brought by the pandemic, which undoubtedly affected their work, but not the high quality results. Regardless of the difficulties, we could count on their dedication, searching for information, and key actors to contribute to the project. So, I wanted to express my most sincere gratitude to the Brazilian consultants. And I also would like to remark that this project allowed us to stop and think about our challenges in a new manner, and seek for new solutions. Learning about the Korean experience was very interesting. And we believe it will help us improve the Brazilian STI system with the lessons learned. It is important to highlight that the high-level authorities of MCTI were involved in this project, notably Minister Marcos Pontes, the Vice Minister, and three of our secretaries, besides directors, technical personnel, and, of course, myself. Many of us were able to learn with the Korean experiences, and at this very moment, MCTI has a team working on a new STI policy using the lessons learned during the project. The results of the project, for a while, are intangible regarding what we will do with the learned lessons. On the other hand, we already have a very tangible product, a report with a proposal for Brazilian policy on STI. The report and the policy proposal were built jointly and involved staff, the Brazilian consultants, and MCTI personnel. So, we have a very consistent document and, of course, 
some adaptations will be necessary as a consequence of the complexity of our system and the need to engage all the Brazilian stakeholders in a consolidated plan for the country. Understanding the Korean process to be one of the most innovative countries was crucial to understand our own challenges and to seek solutions to implement a type of hand project, highly advanced national in our country. We will work with biotechnology for a while, an area in which we have great potential and where we can boost new actions and confirm Brazil as a global power. Our system already has the main tools, rich biodiversity, qualified scientists and entrepreneurs. One of the most important results of this project was to strengthen the ties with South Korea. Indeed, it was our wish since before the current government. Besides, we have a very fruitful relationship with the Korean government, and I believe that this project had the power to approach actors and to create a more fluid institutional dialogue. And I want to thank the South Korean government for being open to sharing your most valuable experiences. At the end of the project, the Brazilian side received valuable information that will be useful for us as tools in creating the new national STI and policy. We'll, this will be our new and exciting challenge. And I hope this project, it's just the first in a series that will bring Brazil and South Korea even closer together. Thanks for everything. It was a pleasure and a real honor to work together with you. Stay sound. Yes, thank you. We heard about the potentials, the challenges, uh, the lacks that uh, that we can see in the Brazilian STI system, uh, and also Mr. Milano drew on areas in which we can cooperate further. Next, we will listen to the case of Kenya, policy recommendation for capacity development for production and management of digital media content at Kunza Technopolis. The speaker is senior researcher Jihad Jumai. I give you 15 minutes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jihad Jamai, and I'm a senior researcher at the Institute of, for Future Radio Engineering, and I'm in charge of the Kenya KSP project titled Policy Design and Marketing Strategy for the Development of Konza DMC Industry, and I'm very honored to be delivering this presentation today. This project focuses mainly on six fields, which are the game, animation, film, photography, game developers education, and Konza Technopolis Development Authority. Through this presentation, I will address the main aspects of each area while focusing on suggested policies for the development of each sector. The main purpose of this project is to share Korea's experience and knowledge in the establishment of the Sunnam DMC to develop a model suitable for Kenya's Konza Technopolis Development Authority, Kota, and provide customized policy to make Kenya a leading country in the media and digital content industry in the sub-Saharan region to propose game developers, content educational curriculum, and to create opportunities for follow-up projects between the two countries. The main objectives of the establishment of the DMC at Konza Technopolis are to position Kenya as a preferred regional destination for investment in the digital media and entertainment industry and to establish collaboration of academia, industry, research in digital media technology at Konza Technopolis and to, cre to create a digital media and entertain entertainment ecosystem at Konza Technopolis and facilitate the attraction of supporting industries. Let's take a look at the current state 
of the Konza Technopolis. Kutta construction has been completed successfully, and the first stage of the National Data Center has been completed, and the second stage is under construction. Inspired by Kriak Heist, which is one of the most prestigious universities in South Korea, Kenya Kais is being established in Konza Technopolis and scheduled it to admit its first students in 2023. The Kenya entertainment and digital media industries are forecast to grow 11.6% between 2017 and 2022. Kenya has enjoyed a decade of a strong economic growth, allowing the country to access the state of a middle-income country in 2016. It was one of the fastest growing economies in the sub-Saharan region and has the highest internet penetration rate in Africa. Now I will address the Kenya Game Digital Media Content Industry Development Plan and share an overview of the current state of the game industry in Kenya. As you can see, the revenue of the eSport in South Africa in general and in Kenya in particular is increasing continuously since 2014 and it's expected to keep increasing in the future. We can say that the mobile games are most popular in the African region due to the fact that owning a smartphone is much easier than a PC and a console game. The Kenya game content industry is growing and self-taught successful game developers are making the history in Africa, such as Andrew Kagia, who is not only a self-taught game developer, but also the man behind Kenya's first 3D game, Nairobi X. The game industry requires support from the government to promote the private sector as the game software development may become an important source of employment and income for the Kenyan people. Cooperation and mutual assistance are among the keys of the development and the progress of the Kenya game industry. We suggested through this project three types of policies for the development of the game industry in Kenya. First, the main focus should be on mobile games with low development and marketing entry barriers targeting the MZ generation. We encourage exchange in massive online open courses due to the lack of educational institutions and the development of cities surrounding Konza in terms of transportation, education, and facilities. We also encourage the implementation of high-speed internet network for Konza DMC and training small numbers of elite engineers and programmers, and we would like to to encourage introducing internet cafe culture and holding regional game competition to increase game consumption by the MZ generation. For the medium to long-term policy proposal, we suggest that the government can implement some change toward the game industry and sustained academy and this industry partnership with leading game countries. Incentive investment into development of elites is highly encouraged, in addition to the preparation to host large game-related trade show. The animation industry is a promising industry in Kenya despite the lack of equipment and animation studios engaged exclusively in the animation planning, production, and distribution process. With the limited resources, Kenya's le The Legend of Luanda Magir received the Best International Short Award at the 2020 Los Angeles Animation Festival and Best Animation at Kalasha 2020. The exist did they, uh, uh, there exist dedicated educational institutions in Kenya to train animation production manpower. However, there is a massive shortage in the equipment for animation production that should be addressed. We believe that building national cooperation relationship is very important. If we look at the case of Korea, first of all, we are creating manpower pool by supporting animation-related universities, specialized educational institutions, and customized human resource development. National 
agencies such as the Korea Creative Content Agency, Korea Film Council, Korea Communication Commission, and the Information Culture Industry Promotion are continuously supporting animation companies in terms of costs, legal system, and oversee market participation. To boost the value of the animation industry in Kenya, we suggest the implementation of infrastructure for basic animation production, the expansion of IP licensing business centered on animation industry foundation, the establishment of strategic infrastructure building, content development, cluster forming, education, administration, and marketing support system goals. In addition, providing support for the production of short animation, new media animation, TV animation series, and feature length animated works, attracting educational and research institution and overseas organization are highly recommended as well. As for the film industry in Kenya, it's growing steadily despite the lacking infrastructure in terms of theater, studio, and equipment. The film industry in Kenya is making the history with some of their short movies. One of them we can mention, Watu Wat, which has been nominated for the Oscar Award, and The Poacher, which is a short movie that made its way to Netflix. We suggested to attract Kenya students to enroll in Korean film-related schools and departments learning and training to work in the future film industry in Kenya. The development of the film industry cluster in the Konza DMC is expected to yield synergic effect to make the Kenyan film industry as a niche industry led by youth talent to transfer Kenya from a coveted African filming location to a hub for digital media and to make Kenya the hub of the African film distribution. We suggested few policies in order to develop the film industry in Kenya, mainly focusing on saturated global block Buster market collaborating with foreign film companies that visiting Kenya for on location shoots, incorporate media literacy education into school, and providing post production training. Moreover, we encourage a change in government and social attitude toward the film industry, and we suggested hosting international film festivals and markets. As for the Kenyan, Photography digital media content industry development plan, we can say that currently Kenya has no separate policy that relates to the photography industry and has no institution for professionals photography education. Kenyan photo related industries need to be classified with reference to the Korean photography related industry classification table. In this regard, we proposed a list of policies for the development of the photography industry. First of all, we encourage providing professional education programs, subdivision of the photography field, and the implementation of photography infrastructure are required to promote the photography culture and develop the industry. It's highly recommended to retrain photographers to improve professionalism especially that we know most of the photographers in Kenya are self-taught. The digitalization of the Kenyan photography industry through photography equipment, supplies, and studio rental business in the Konza DMC is strongly recommended. Moving to the game developers' education in Kenya, by investigating the current data, we came to a conclusion that no formal educational institutions were found to offer game development education in Kenya. Interviews with game developers in Kenya revealed that not only there is no educational institute offering game development education, but also there is no experts that are able to provide high quality education. And that's what explains the fact that most of the game developers in Kenya are self-taught. We suggested some policies in this regard and mainly we suggested designing uh, the design of project-centered educational program to train developers' manpower with practical skills and holding public competitions to motivate the young developers. 
As for the long-term policy proposal, we suggested the implementation of game development and structure training programs alongside students' educational program. For the Konza Technopolis Development Authority Development Plan, the main challenge is to create the best smart digital media city in Africa set to foster the human resource and create quality jobs to boost the smart media industry. And that's by focusing on two main goals, smart media service that makes people happier in Kenya where urbanization rate is low and attracting foreign high tech technologies and capital capital through the creation of global win-win ecosystem. We propose a three-phase development plan to create an ecosystem of Konza DMC by attracting companies and research centers to create a pleasant business city and to provide cultural education facilities and spaces, encouraging technology startup within Konza DMC and establishing educational organization. The Konza DMC creation process required substantial value-added growth through innovation activity and a proper balance between space and physical structure. The success of the project, Konza, requires close and systematic opportunity for special identity leading to Africa, Kenya, Konza era identity linking tradition and future analog and digital content identity combined with advanced technology design and value chain. The Kansa Technopolis DMC promotes follow-up research on the artificial intelligent meta meta platform strategy for the creation, maintenance, and management of the Konza DMC ecosystem. In the future, the interface visualized in the interaction will be in 2030, when the vision of the Kenyan government will be uh, realized with the, uh, with the arrival of the 6G era based on super intelligent, it will be possible to fulfill its role as a high tech smart digital media city hub suitable for the era of self innovation. The Konza DMC will play an important role as a hub in Kenya various innovation bases, research and production process through the establishment of virtual Technopolis Park, as well as a model diffusion education function. It's necessary to indicate that it's important to transfer Konza by various government agencies related to the DMC located in Nairobi. In order to implement flexible policies, the third sector, Kota, should be used as a development and operation subject, and the su success of Konza DMC should be pursued with continuous enthusiasm and responsibility. The ability of the public sector to form partnership with the private sector is as important uh, as an important key in planning and promoting project, uh, projects. It's expected that the Konza Technopolis will emerge as an industrial hub and a landmark of Kenya and East Africa. During this project, we also held follow-up business meeting for two days in order to create a sustainable network between business owners in Korea and in Kenya to encourage future collaboration between the two countries. We invited from Korea executives from each field to share their insights and expertise with, the, with Kenya to encourage the continuous development of each industry in Kenya in the future while referring to Korea as a benchmark. We also provided a capacity building program and we provided training session in each field to officials from Kenya to share the Korean knowledge and experience. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for keeping your time and for speaking very concisely about the policy cooperation with Korea. In particular, Kenya is trying to develop its digital media contents industry and efforts are being made to make Kenya as the DMC hub. Thank you very much for your presentation. The next presentation 
as was mentioned, will be focusing on the case of Honduras. And it will be uh, regarding the designing a smart city strategy for La Ceiba. Uh, it will be delivered by Director General uh, Hong Sun Son of Samsung SDS. Good afternoon. I am Song Hong Sun, working with Samsung SDS. I'd like to take this opportunity uh, to thank you and also tell you how honored I am to be able to share this case with you. Now I will start my presentation regarding the joint consulting project on designing a smart city strategy for La Ceiba. Now La Ceiba is located uh, on the coast of Honduras in the north the northern part of the country, and it is has a population of 20,000. And so the focus of this project was to expand to 200,000, and the focus was to make this into a tourism city. So I will be going through, uh, starting with the introduction and overview. Korea Exim Bank, IDB, the municipality of La Ceiba, and the uh, embassy of Korea in Honduras all cooperated and it lasted for seven months. And our focus uh, was to make sure that this could be a foundation for future plans to make La Ceiba into a digital tourism city. So this is a situation of Honduras and La Ceiba. Uh, Honduras has a national vision 2038, which is focused on national development. In ICT, they have various uh, plans in place to pursue e-government and digital trans transformation. In, trans in the terms of tourism, they also have an ENTS policy in place, which is focusing on developing nine areas, including Las Cebas. In terms of transportation, they are expanding related infrastructure, and they have intelligent transport systems being introduced into uh, Tegucigalpa and San Petro Sula. In terms of security and safety, the National Police, uh, the firefighting agencies, and other related agencies are collaborating, and they have a com com command control center. Also, the central government uh, have has certain plans, and in line with this, La Ceiba is c pursuing various policies for ecotourism, such as uh, focusing on its traditional markets and festivals, as well as expanding its public terminals and roads. Also, it's focusing on maintaining a safe environment and responding to accidents and emergencies. What we did was we compared uh, the situation of La Ceiba with that of Korean smart cities. And we found that La Ceiba is in at the start of uh, smart city services, whereas Korea is at the stage of saturation uh, and maturity. And uh, this was well received. The gap analysis enabled the stakeholders to face the situation and to realize the problems. Now let's move on uh, with regards to the policies and strategies. Now the central government and La Ceiba uh, city also had their policies. So our policy recommendations were established to align with this. It focused on modernizing the transport and also digital transformation as well as safety issues. And this is the vision and the target of this project. We wanted to make La Ceva into a city that enabled smart ecotourism and allowed easy experience of tourism resources, and also uh, did this through convenient transport in a safe environment. We had five targets. First of all, we wanted to make sure that information was provided in an integrated manner, uh, which covered 
routes as well as tourist attractions and accommodations and transport. Also, customized packages uh, personalized to the individual traveler would be needed. Second, we needed accessibility to, uh, to transport information so that people can move around safely. And third, using cutting edge technology, we thought that it would be important to focus on prevention rather than solving the incidents and accidents after they occurred. Fourth, we also wanted to create a smart platform which would be the basis for the smart city and also with related laws and regulations we wanted to facilitate smart city services. To achieve these strategies, we identified the key priorities by this funnel approach, as you can see. It had a four-tier filtering process. We went through the many smart city cases of Korea, and we did brainstorming to come up with preliminary cases that could be linked to uh, La Ceiba, and we uh, scored them and prioritized them after scoring them. And after that, we received feedback from the central and city government to come up with the tasks. This is a roadmap established through this process. The smart cities require a long preparation period, and also skilled know-how and experience are required for stabilization. La Ceiba is also developing a digital tourism city service under three stages, the introduction phase, the expansion stage, and the stabilization phase. And the first introduction stage, a feasibility study is carried out on the three action plans, which are expected to be the most important and effective. They are implementation of an integrated tourism information system, implementation of intelligent crime prevention CCTV system and rollout of an integrated city operation center. The action plans are implemented after their effectiveness are verified through a feasibility study. In the second expansion phase, the verified plans are expanded so that they are implemented throughout La Ceiba City. In addition, the integrated tourism information service, which is considered to have a synergistic effect, is promoted in connection with the eight major tourist cities of Honduras. During the third stage of stabilization, the remaining action plans are carried out and functions of the Integrated City Operations Center are expanded to include smart city services such as environmental, education, medical services. The following is a breakdown of 18 action plans in strategic areas, but for the sake of time, I will only mention three key strategic areas out of the five. First is the action plan for convenient sightseeing experiences. The main issues include the difficulty of securing overall tourism information, as relevant information are fragmented and not offered in an integrated manner. This makes it difficult to draw up and establish travel plans. Web and social media such as Facebook-based delivery of simple messages are not that helpful in promoting tourism. During working hours, tourist information offices are operated in only two locations, the airport terminal and the central park, the Plaza Centro Francisco Morazan, limiting the access to travel service support. To resolve these issues, an integrated tourist information database will be established to provide information service to visitors as part of the 18 action plans. Also, virtual travel experiences will be offered and digital signages will be prepared as part of the Strength and City Promotion Service. Last but not least, 24-7 tourism information services and tourist interpretation service will be offered. As such, by offering abundant information and convenient services, more tourists will be attracted to the city. Second, the four action plans under the strategy for building a safe and enjoyable city. Accident prevention activities currently consist of police patrols and youth education. CCTV for crime prevention is not in place in La Ceiba City, but its efficacy has been proven in locations such as Tegucigalpa, San Pedro Sula, and Tella. In Korea, as you know, as of 2019, 1.11 million cameras are operated. You can say that, and through CCTV and image analysis, the number of crimes have gone down and criminal asset arrests have become uh, easier. The Sabre streets are dark, raising the risks of safety accidents. 
Therefore, CCTV crime prevention services for accident preventions, location tracking based mobile safety protection services, smart street lighting for brighter and safe streets, and strengthening of patrolling using drones will be pursued. Third, the three action plans for the smart city integration platform. As explained before, information related to smart city service operation and management must be collected so that swift and accurate decisions can be made, and for this, visibility must be secured. It has been proven that the five 9-11 centers in Honduras have been efficiently carrying out such functions. In Korea, smart city-related platforms have been established in 79 cities. Honduras and La Ceiba are converting from web-based to mobile-friendly services, but many citizens are feeling that the telecommunication costs are a bit burdensome. Considering such circumstances, operation centers that can monitor smart city services in an integrated manner are being built. Such operation centers can help utilize big data to continuously develop smart city services. Public Wi-Fi networks are built for citizens and visitors' use. Next are the smart tourism city service and system model. A smart city integrated platform is built for offering 18 services. Utilizing IoT and image technology, raw data is collected to compose an integrated database. Such data are integrated together and analyzed, allowing for integrated governance. In addition, all relevant internal and external systems are linked together so that information is provided to and utilized by tourist citizens and government authorities. This will in turn lead to the formation of a smart city system. Next are the expected benefits of the 18 action plans. Because tourists can easily obtain and utilize travel information before and during travel, the number of inbound tourists will increase. Citizens will enjoy a drop in the transportation and telecommunication costs and will enjoy a life in a city with declining crime rates and accidents. Tourism-driven income will go up for businesses and merchants, and businesses will grow. The La Ceiba global government will be able to contribute to job creation, make faster and more accurate decisions based on data, and the smart city services will continuously improve. I have just introduced the strategy for La Ceiba to promote itself as a smart tourism city. The following are the next steps required after the KSP project. First, a feasibility analysis will be carried out and on the ROA of the three action plans to determine whether or not investments will be made because the plans require a considerable amount of investment verification process is essential. Next are the details of the feasibility study. Three action plans among the total 18 action plans, namely the Integrated Tourism Information Provision Service, the Intelligent City CCTV Crime Prevention Service, and the establishment of the Integrated Operations Center are essential for building smart city services. Therefore, a feasibility study on these three Three action plans will be carried out. The budget will be $500,000, and the time frame is expected to be around eight months, with the start date being in January. This project received heated response from the IDB and the Honduras Public Innovation Department and authorities of La Ceiba City, and the reason for this can be summarized as follows. First, rather than opting for simple one-off improvement measures, we focused on mid- to long-term developments, and Korea has try to increase the participation of the recipient country. In addition to official events such as interim reports and closing reports, workshops were held through video conferencing. For such events, various video materials were put together and interviews with experts and citizens were shared, as well as photos taken during in-person visits to help those from the recipient country have a better understanding of the development of Korea's. These were used for free exchange of views and discussions. And third, Korea's advanced smart city environment were relayed. Uh, 
and also there was online training. Not only were lectures by experts in the field of tourism transportation safety offered, but also videos created by TF agents who went on site to film the videos were carried out, and the workshops proved to be very useful. And the ministers and working level officials who attended the workshops became aware of the need for establishing smart city services and became committed to the endeavor. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, we heard about the efforts and the strategies, the five strategies that were established and the 18 tasks uh, to build a smart city for in Honduras. And there were also detailed uh, proposals. So it was a very interesting and um, informative presentation. We've heard three presentations. And as I said earlier, we heard about the overall fundamental infrastructure of uh, STI, and we moved on to uh, the digital contents and also smart cities. And the three presentations uh, focused about the results, focused on the results uh, of collaboration between Korea and the respective countries. We have with us uh, three professors, Chang Yongsun, Yi Juyun, and Yi Jung Hun. Uh, and we would like to ask you to comment. Um, each person will be given five minutes. Yes, hello. I am Chang Yongsun from Myeongji University. And I will be giving a few comments on the Brazilian presentation. First of all, I'd like to thank the presenter for a great presentation. Uh, there was an analysis to discover the issues, and also the Korean side provided some consultation with regards to this. Because of the pandemic, I think that there were some limitations in finding out and discovering the lacks that the country had. However, uh, I think it's quite meaningful that there were various ways of, of cooperation to overcome the distance and do that. Uh, I think we've heard about the Honduras case, and I want to focus on R&D. Well, Brazil will grow into a economic engine, and that was the initial expectation, but I think that because of labor productivity issues and their lack of diverse products, they have not been able to do so. Um, core iron and food ingredients and other uh, primary ingredients and uh, materials are the core of the exports that Brazil produces. And I think that um, one way to overcome this limitation is STI. In terms of GDI, GDP of the OECD countries and other developing countries, uh, their portion of investment allocated to science and technology is not that high. And so I believe that the issue itself was extremely timely for Brazil. Other key issues with regards to Brazil is that Brazil in R&D investment, uh, the private sector is not that active. Particularly, most of the R&D investment has been invested um, in the existing products to enhance in existing products rather than into new innovative ideas. And I think that therefore it's needed for an STI system to overcome that and also to focus on um, nurturing high skilled talents. As we heard, there has been a lot of effort in improving the system that they have, and I've under and I understand that there has been some good deliver deliverables. But I also think that this has to be linked with their long-term economic development policies. Also, we need to invest for innovation. 
But if the investment is not sustainable, um, if it it fluctuates too much, I think that could lead to problems. So this is another issue that they have to overcome. We also have to look at the competitive edge that Brazil has. In today's presentation, I think it was mentioned that Brazil has natural uh, resources and also biodiversity. And as was mentioned, uh, bio areas and agriculture could be fields in which R&D investment could be valuable. Uh, with regards to the overall direction of R&D investment, I would like to share a few ideas. There are lots of government agencies and municipalities, and the R&D resources need to be uh, grouped into one so that there is no uh, overlapping investment. They could, for instance, come up with a big data analysis system or a database. And even in Korea, very recently, there have been various efforts to this end. Also, uh, we hear a lot about the fourth industrial revolution. And many people question what innovation is anyway. When we speak about innovation, it focuses on discovery, new discovery in science and technology, creating something new, whether it's products or services. But recently, within the fourth industrial revolution, an important factor is convergence. So convergence can lead to new innovations. I think this is an area that we should focus on, on how STNI can allow this. Also, I think this was mentioned, but another important factor is the soft power, the cultural contents of the country. So how can we support this kind of a soft power? I think this is something we have to ponder. Also, the development of science and technology is meaningful because it has to go hand in hand with the country's social and cultural development as well. So science and technology can't go uh, separately and it can't be fragmented and go on its own. Another thing I believe is important is uh, the importance of SMEs and startups. So in the private sector, I think it's important that you have a good collaborative system between the big companies and SMEs. This has always been an issue, but I think that the importance is being underscored in recent years. Also, how can SMEs collaborate with one another and each other? This is another issue we should think about. In Korea, there has been a long-standing question of whether it's right to support R&D based on outcomes. There are some studies that say that government funding um, facilitates good research, and there are other studies that point in the other direction. But what's important is that you need to know the status quo. And in order to do that, you need to collect a lot of data and look at the data and continue to search for potential policies. And also, you need to continue to uh, compare. So what's important is there needs to be a system that continues to analyze the outcomes, the deliverables. In order for this to uh, work, you need data. And they say that data is the key engine of the fourth industrial revolution. So you need to not only support data-related technologies, but be able to use that data for future uh, innovation and development. I think these are questions that we have to keep in mind. Thank you. With that, I'd like to conclude my comments. Uh, yes, thank you. Why don't we go on to Professor Yi Ju Yan. Yes, as was just introduced, my name is Yi Ju Yun, professor of Aju University. 
No, thank you for the three presentations regarding KSP. The first was about Brazil and the policy and governance improvement for SDI was mentioned and the presentation was given by Mr. Bernard. Thank you very much. And this was focused on a sustainable uh, sustainable financing and funding and also enhancing this system and the presentation focused on how they determined their lacks and also collaborated with Korea. What's important is that a sustain sustainable cooperation between Brazil and Korea uh, is needed for the two countries to grow together. And I think that there are three conditions that need to be taken into consideration. First is the technological environment, whether there is openness and convergence. Second, in terms of policy, uh, the effectiveness and accountability needs to be taken into consideration. And third is whether there is an environment, an autonomous and sustainable environment that supports uh, the activities of researchers. Now, moving on to the second presentation. This was about the digital media contents development of Konza Technopolis, and the speaker was a senior researcher Jihae Jumai. Thank you for the presentation. So the development of a major hub in Kenya was mentioned, the digital media city hub and also uh, the related industry fostering policy recommendations were introduced. And Korea has worked with Kenya to identify the policies that need to be designed, also the educational content that should be provided. And I understand that three policy uh, advice were provided for the continuous and sustainable growth of the digital media city, uh, continuous exchanges with the Sangam digital uh, media city is needed and also continuous infrastructure development is required as well. The last presentation was on the case of Honduras, the development of a smart city in La Ceiba, and the presenter was from Samsung SDS. Thank you for the presentation. La Ceiba is a eco-friendly tourism-centered uh, city of Honduras and the La Ceiba Smart City project focuses on tourism as well as uh, transportation and it utilizes ICT. If you look at the action plans, uh, providing integrated information services and utilizing CCTVs for crime prevention was mentioned. So three major action plans were mentioned as well as an integrated operation control system. So in order, the La Ceiba uh, Smart City Project uh, was successful because there was a mid to long term perspective that was implemented. And also, I heard that Korea's case was uh, well delivered to Honduras for its reference. I think that what is most important for the development of smart cities is that La Ceiba reflects its unique characteristics into the policies and also induce active participation so that there is active implementation of aspects that can um, further advance the city. And going into the future, Korea, Kenya, and Korea, Honduras, and Korea, Brazilian exchanges and cooperation should be promoted. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. So next, I would like to invite Professor Han Bom Su of Kyunghee University. Please go ahead. Yes, so I'm Han Bom Su of Kyunghee University. We heard from Brazil and Kenya. And the commentators have commented on the first two cases. And so I will be focusing more on the third uh, case study, the Honduras presentation. Professor Adrian mentioned that La Ceiba is a, a eco-centric tourism city, which is true. But 
where does La Ceiba, uh, where is it located, located on the international scale? Many people say that there are lots of favorable areas for tourism, but this city isn't on top. The fact that people want to make this into a smart tourism city is that uh, the Honduras government wants to make this city into a tourism city with a cutting edge, uh, one that sets it apart from other competing cities. But I also believe that we should not rush too much, just as uh, Mr. Song mentioned in his presentation, I also agree with what he said in that it has to be a long-term project. Uh, they're going to have a feasibility study soon, but the initial stage is very important, I believe, because tourism, paradoxically, uh, can take place in areas and regions uh, that are underdeveloped. People might actually like that. If you push too fast towards modernization, that might not work. Uh, when you ask yourself what value the tourist, tourist wants and what they're looking for, uh, you might come up with a good outcome, but you have to focus on that, the tourist's needs. There was mention of using drones and uh, also solar panels to light the street lights. You may do all of that and end up with a framework, but you won't have any tourists there. And in that case, you uh, will not have a good outcome. So while you should keep your plans ambitious, you should make sure that you do this step by step and uh, make sure all the steps have been done properly. Uh, very recently, there was a meeting, and I was the moderator of a panel, and we discussed the post-corona uh, era and what tourism would look like. And many people said that values and experience will become important, more important in the post-corona era. Uh, I think that this area, uh, Honduras, will strive, of course, to attract tourists from countries like Korea, but it should also focus on neighboring countries. It will try to do that. Also, it could target countries within its region, or it could uh, target countries like us, which is more geographically uh, far away. So I think that there should be thorough research as to who they want to target. I think it could be dangerous if you just build a framework without any consideration of who you want to be, who you want to attract, and what kind of value you will be able to deliver to these tourists. And uh, there was mention that you will be developing a comprehensive system, an integrated system. Of course, you need you need that, but that system is only meaningful when it lives on. Just as one of the commentators mentioned, not data. Uh, just having the data in itself is not meaningful. Before we had the smartphone. Uh, our world was completely different from what we know right now. With a mobile phone, you can travel the world. What happens if you go there and you find out that the data that you find there uh, is not updated? That will lead, that will hit your credibility. Also, with regards to technology, uh, you could have drones in the air to secure a safe environment and have various uh, security systems. Of course, that's important. But what's more important is to make sure that they operate well and properly. So I think that the central government uh, and stakeholders of the government and the agencies 
uh, all took part. I'm sure that that was there, and I think that that is great that you did that. But it should be repetitive. It shouldn't be a one-time thing. Just as uh, our reflexes work, that kind of a stakeholder meeting should be regular. And if it works in Honduras, I'm, I think that that will have a ripple effect to neighboring countries and expand to other areas as well, so that tourists from Korea and Asia will go there and vice versa. Uh, I'd like to congratulate you for the efforts that you made, and I hope that uh, the plan works well so that a uh, smart city will be established in La Ceiba as planned. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we heard from the three panelists as well. And so we have heard all of what has been planned. Uh, we are behind schedule, but I think that perhaps we can open up the floor for Q&A. If you have any questions, perhaps we can entertain one or two. Before we began the session, I had received the, um, some questions in advance from the floor. So why don't I raise the questions that I received? Of course, digital infrastructure development is important. But from the digital technology user's perspective, I think that acquiring digital technology is also important as well. In Korea, there is this issue of digital divide. How can we resolve this issue of digital divide? That is a question that came from the floor. So is there anyone who can answer this question? Among the panels, is there anyone who would like to respond? How can we solve the digital divide issue? Professor Chang, would you like to speak? Or Mr. Son? Please go ahead. Can you repeat the question, please? Digital infrastructure development is important, but from the digital technology user's perspective, acquiring the digital capabilities and literacy is important. In Korea, the digital divide has become a major challenge. How can we tackle this issue, the challenge of a digital divide? How can we resolve this issue of digital divide? Well, in Korea, digital literacy is an issue that we are trying to resolve. And so at the local community centers and also the service centers in the cities and in municipalities, I understand that related education is being provided. In our uh, research and study, I understand, based on our study, uh, many efforts are being made in Korea, uh, initiated by the government and more efforts are being made compared to other uh, countries. Also, for the elderly and the young and the vulnerable in our society, I understand that there are plans already established to resolve this issue of a digital divide or lack of digital literacy. And also, while we were providing consulting, we relayed some related information to the recipient country. So anyone else who would like to comment on this topic among the panelists? I think I can give you about 10 to 20 seconds. Yes, let me speak. Well, of course, the users are important, but I think that in the design process, you have to think about why you are designing and establishing this system. You have to understand and keep in mind the purpose of building the system. For example, when we were implementing ERP or CRM systems, we see that these businesses, they just acquire the CRM packages, but the process and how you analyze the customers are very important, but sometimes you lose sight of the original purpose. So I think that these uh, issues should also be considered when tackling this matter. Yes, thank you very much. Now we are behind schedule, but we have heard three pre presentations and also we heard from the three panelists. So for the green digital transformation, what kind of scientific innovation system do we need? What kind of efforts are required? And based on the scientific outcomes, how can we 
utilize the outcomes of digital media content development and smart city development in our society and economy. I think we were able to obtain information about that and also we were able to learn about the exchanges between Korea and the recipient countries. And I do hope that these types of discussions can continue to expand so that science and technology can be further effectively utilized in the green digitalization efforts. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you as well as our panelists uh, here on site, as well as online. Uh, distinguished guests, please give them another big round of applause. Thank you.